Hi, in the last video in this series, I showed you how to use the mesh to collision tool to automatically generate uh, simple collision convex hull shapes for sort of arbitrary static meshes. Uh, and I showed you how you could use this max hulls per mesh setting to automatically decompose a more complex shape into a set of sort of sub hulls to get a tighter fit in collision geometry. So that works really well. Uh, on lots and lots of models, but if you want really precise control over your collision geometry for certain areas, you know, you can tweak these settings all day and you might just never get it. So here on this bunny, I've set it to five parts, uh, which is what we're going to end up with when we do it manually. But you see the ear here, this ear has been merged with part of the head. Uh, and the tail here, maybe I want to be able to stand on the tail there. My, if I want my character to be able to jump up there, it's not going to be able to because the tail is combined with part of the body. So it's very hard for the algorithm to automatically understand what's a tail and what's an ear because all it knows about is that this is just a bunch of triangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually author the collision uh, using this tool and then also just by making some s simple mesh shapes. So I'll show you how to use the mesh to collision tool in a more advanced way first. So what we're going to do is jump over to the create tab, do a duplicate operation. I'm going to set the type here, this is important to set it to dyna dynamic mesh, and I'm going to set it to keep inputs. So setting it to dynamic mesh, what that means is it's going to make a dynamic mesh copy of the object, which means it's not going to make a new asset. If I had left it a static mesh, it would make another bunny asset, which I don't really want because I'm going to throw this away once I'm done. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to split this mesh up into pieces. So I'm going to go into the try select tool. And I'm just going to paint, I showed this last time, you can use this to kind of split up an asset. So I'm going to just quickly here paint out a few parts. So I'm going to use, instead of uh, separate, which would make a new object, I'm just going to use disconnect. So that's just going to add like a border between these two mesh regions, um, which is all I need for this uh, thing. I'm, then I just have one object. So I'm using the C hotkey to center the camera, that's really useful when you're doing this kind of painting stuff. Uh, that looks okay. So disconnect, clear the selection. I'm going to do the tail just real quick. Uh, I got to hide this grid because I want to be able to see underneath. Uh, when you're painting stuff like this, this uh, Optimize border button can be really useful to just help you get a bit more control. Now here, because I want, I don't want the body convex hull and the tail to interfere with each other, I have to be a little bit careful in the painting here. So the convex hull fits around the tail part there. Um, so let's uh, disconnect that. And then we just have one more. I'm just going to paint the head. So the brush here is set up to not go across the borders of these regions. So it's not going to cross over into the parts that I separated. Uh, if I change the modes here, you can do all sorts of different filtering and stuff like that in this tool. But uh, for this video, I'm just doing this quickly. And maybe optimize and let's disconnect that. Okay, so now we've taken this bunny and we've split it up into some pieces. You can see the red borders. So I'm going to accept now. So it looks the same, but it's actually disconnected across some of those edges. So now if I turn the ground plane back on. So now if I um, have this bunny, I'm going to shift click my original static mesh bunny. I'm going to go back to the mesh to collision tool. And one went wrong. Oh, I want to get rid of this five hulls per mesh. Try that again. Okay, so uh, right now it's just fitting one. I need to change this input mode from per input object. So now what this tool is doing is it's using this mesh I initially selected as the mesh that's going to figure out the collision from. So uh, we could do whatever we want to this mesh. Um, so for instance, we could go in here and like simplify it uh, to have a lower triangle count. I'll just do that. So it's not the same mesh anymore but I can still use it as my collision, sh uh, sort of the basis for the collision. So when I do that mesh to collision, it's using the other geometry. Now, 
it's more or less the same shape, but I'm going to change this to per mesh component. And now you see that it's basically fitting one convex hull to each part of that mesh I made. It's not 100% obvious because you can't see the original mesh, but that's what's happening. So you see the whole body is one shape. We can turn on show hidden here. The head is one shape. Each ear is one shape. And we've got the tail here like we wanted, a pretty precise sort of surface there that we'll be able to jump on. Um, so if I accept this now, we've still got our original bunny here. We didn't really do anything to this one, but now if we jump to the uh, player collision view, you can see that the collision shapes are, you know, set based on that input mesh. Um, let's go back. And so, you know, if you decided you didn't want collision on the ears, you could, for instance, go into the try select tool again, set this to uh, I'll just leave it as brush. Set that the flood fill, delete those. And now if we do the same thing again, you're going to see that now there won't be any collision on the ears because we deleted those from the other mesh. So I hope that's clear what's happening is that we're using this input mesh um, as the basis for the collision on this other object. And then, you know, if I'm just trying to set up collision on this bunny, I can just go back here and delete that one. I'm done now. I don't need it anymore. It didn't make an asset. Uh, and I've got nice collision on my bunny now that I'm going to save. Okay, so that's how you can sort of take a mesh, make a copy of it, and then edit it and use that edited copy to set up collision. So what if you, you know, that seems kind of tedious and you just want to do something quick. So I've got this archway I made over here. We see... Uh, a lot of people having trouble with arches because if you import an arch, the default collision is going to fill in, you know, if it's just a box or something, you won't be able to walk through the arch. So, you know, I could do what I just did. I could make a copy. I could paint out areas, whatever, but maybe I don't really want it to, I'm, I don't even need convex hulls. I just want some boxes here. So what I can do is I can just make some. So I'm going to use, so you could use the box tool and place boxes and scale them and stuff. I'm going to use the extrude polygon tool because I find that faster. I'm going to set the mode here to rectangle um, and uh, I'm going to set the output type to volume. So I'll show you why in a second I'm going to set it to volume. I'm going to turn off snap to vertices because otherwise if I have snap to vertices on this can be really useful for collision. It's going to snap to the shape but I just want to eyeball it so I'm going to turn off snap to vertices. And you, it's also it's snapping to the grid right now so if I set this grid cell size to something large, you'll see that it's snapping to the grid. That's what that diamond shape means. Um, I'll put that back to four. So I'll, I think that's fine. So I'm just going to basically draw some boxes here real quick. So there's one. You see when I let go, it switches to a volume. I could also um, oh, use a dynamic mesh. In fact, we can use either. Let's might as well do that just as a demo. Two. Um, now in this tool, you're drawing on a plane, you can see, and what I can actually do is I can control click to set the draw plane. So I'm going to just control click until I find something that seems pretty aligned with that. And I'm going to do, oh, that's not good. That's okay. I'll fix it afterwards. Uh, okay. And then I'm going to press complete here. So I made some quick boxes. Uh, let's turn off the snapping. I'm just going to eyeball this stuff. Put it in approximately the right place. This one, you know, I made it too big. I'm going to go jump into polygroup edit. It's a box so I can just grab the faces and move them in until they look okay. Um, I could grab this edge here. Maybe fix that. Uh, polygroup edit also works on volume. So I got this volume back here. That's too, I, you know, messed that one up too. I'll just move that in until I see it kind of pop through. Maybe this front one comes forward a bit. Okay, so, and then, I don't know, those bunnies up here, let's let's just make some spheres for them. So same thing, I'll put these as volumes. Um, scale them up a bit. There. Oh, I alt dragged it, so it made two. So, same kind of thing here. You know, 
do I need a super precise collision on those bunnies? Maybe, or maybe not. Okay, so now if I want to set collision for this shape, it's the same thing I did before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift select all these simple shapes I made. And then at the last, I'm going to shift select um, my sort of archway that I had made. And I'm going to go back in here into the mesh to collision tool. Now, um, the tool here by default is set to convex hulls. But, you know, what you can see here is that it's fitting some other shapes. So it's fitting boxes and spheres to some of these other shapes. So what I can do, um, in fact, I don't really like the box it was fitting on this piece up here. I can uncheck detect boxes. If I wanted to keep more precise up there, I could uncheck detect spheres. So spheres are cheaper, so I'm going to leave those as spheres. That's, that's why I used a sphere primitive, because it'll fit a sphere. Um, because I'm sort of messed with the boxes, uh, it's, it's getting a bit confused in this box detection. So I, that's why I unchecked that one. But you can see here now that basically the collision shapes are being taken from those input meshes. So I'm just going to accept this now. Uh, now all those extra things are kind of garbage. I don't need them anymore. Um, I'm just going to move this out. We'll have a look at the player collision. You see it's a sphere and some boxes. So that's what I was going for in this context. And these pieces back here, uh, same thing. I don't need them anymore. I'm just going to delete them. Now, so that's a way to manually author collision if you want something, you know, controlled or, or uh, you know, shape by shape. Now, there's one more thing, which is maybe you've already got collision. Like maybe I ran this tool, I deleted that stuff, and now I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, uh, I don't love this top box or maybe these spheres. I need to fix them. So there we, uh, there's another workflow where basically you can get those meshes back out and edit them. So I'm going to use this collision to mesh tool to go the other way. Uh, I'm going to, for the collision shapes, make meshes. So I'm going to extract the simple collision. You can also extract the complex collision, but I'm going to extract the simple collision. I've got output separate meshes checked. I'm going to output them as volumes. So those are the three critical things. So if I do that, I get volumes back for each of those pieces. You can see they're not the identical to the meshes I put in, but that doesn't really matter because they're just going to get reused for collision. So now maybe I could go into this one, um, you know, jump into polygroup edit. Maybe I didn't like how I was colliding there. Uh, and then shift select these pieces again and my main object and do mesh to collision. And now you see it's detecting um, those input pieces. What if I turn this boxes back on? Oh yeah, it, it really wants to uh, fit a, a box to that top piece. Um, so now I can accept that. And now I've got the edited collision uh, applied to my object. And same thing, now I can delete those temporary parts that I made. Probably easier to just go over here. Okay, so. Uh, that's the end of this video. So I showed you three things, how to um, sort of break up a mesh to into parts to use as collision shapes, how to model quickly some basic collision shapes like boxes and spheres, uh, and then how to extract the collision geometry from a mesh so that you can tweak it and put it back in. Uh, I'll just show you one other thing um, that you might want to know because that tweaking workflow I just showed you you know, it does work, can be a bit tedious. So if I want to just go into the static mesh editor, this is uh, the sort of older style of doing stuff in UE. Um, but I can turn on show simple collision in the static mesh editor. And now you can actually select these shapes and move them around. Um, that's not possible in modeling mode to directly just move around the collision shapes right now. So if you want to do that, if I just wanted to say tweak these posi the, their position or make them a little bit bigger, you can do that uh, in, the in the static mesh editor and you can also add additional shapes. So I find this myself not the easiest way to do things, but if you just wanted to say add one more sphere or something like that, you can come in here and use this collision dropdown to do things like that. And then when you save the asset and then go back to the viewport, and switch on player collision, you'll see that it's been edited. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.